Hey everybody, welcome to Spilling the IT. I'm Paul Burke, and that's Adam Burke, and uh, we are here with Quist, Quest, Quist, Quest Technology Management. Um, I handle the social media side of things, and Adam is the VP of Partnerships in Sales. So we wanted to talk to you today about zero trust vulnerability, which I'm gonna be honest, not something I know a lot about. So I'm, hey, I'm excited to learn. Um, so there, there's an introduction. There's a strong intro, Adam. How are you doing? <laughs> good, good. You have a good week. I know it's it's Friday at four o'clock. So yeah. some cylinders might not be firing right now. Prime but, um, live streaming time. You want the eyeballs four o'clock on a Friday. You're gonna get them. Yes, absolutely. You know. Um, but uh, doing well. It's been a good week. It's been a good week. Had uh, had some had some big things happen this week for us, um, and uh, it's been it's been good. It's going well. Awesome. Yeah, it's been a great week over here. Yeah. Just um, been working on some some video projects for Quest, which has been a lot of fun. It's been fun to dive into that and work on those. And yeah, it's it's been a great week. Cool. Are you working on those um, the ones Sean Davidson's putting together for the the different uh, different yeah. security? Yeah. Cool. Yep. So Those working with him, um, making suggestions, kind of like editing the content. It, it's been a good time. It's been fun working nice. with him. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's great. Yeah. That's cool. He's a great guy to work with. Um, speaking of Sean Davidson, he actually wrote our article for that we want to talk about today on zero. Yeah. On yeah. Zero trust. Yeah. He talked about uh, zero trust and kind of the the six different layers of control that 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 covers. So he's. The man, the myth, the legend, put that together, and um, yeah, that's kind of what we're, what we're diving into today. So, what's uh, I'm curious, what part about it does, doesn't make sense to you as a not a layman, but as a person who doesn't necessarily uh, get involved in 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 the technology uh, sales world? You know what? So I think it's I under I understand the idea of it, and I and I think we we can dive into that. The idea, like, just approach all situations like you do not trust the device or the, the the person logging in like i understand that like distrust everything distrust adam mm -hmm. I, I understand um but x files man trust no one trust yeah. no one the you know the what was it, marble man or deep throat or cigarette smoker or what was that guy yeah the cigarette smoker the, yeah i think yeah. he also went by the i don't think he went by mark maybe he went by marble man <laughs> I don't know, but the I truth is out there. He had a nickname. Mulder had a nickname for him. And by the way, how pissed off would Mulder be right now that 60 Minutes runs a UFO, like a, a UFO special, mm -hmm. and everyone's kind of like, eh. Like, I mean, there are UFOs. Like, it was on 60 Minutes. And everyone's just kind of like, yeah, well, you know, you know, we got... <laughs> We got the Bitcoin. What? Are you kidding me? Come on! Like I want to. There are UFOs. Like I, I want to give. I want to give credit where credit's due. I think it's Bill Burr because he was. He does a bit about this where he's like, "What an example 2020 is, where when the least interesting thing was like UFOs, we're like, all right, fine. We got a lot of other things to deal with right now. Like what an example of 2020. Oh. Yeah." Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like, okay, well, let's just add it to the pile. Mm -hmm. just, everything's fine. Everything's going to be fine. But we're talking about zero trust. Anyways, so yeah. zero trust, back to zero trust. Mm -hmm. Nice segue between aliens and uh, and, uh, and zero trust. But, and um, I, I, do think, I do think it's pretty appropriate to kind of start, you know, talking about zero trust because of, I mean, ransomware is basically a situation where there is likely – there, there was trust. Uh, well, you never know particularly how the ransomware starts, but it's so rampant. Like, in fact, Sierra College, which is a very local um, community college, it, it, you know, near here, like they just got hit with ransomware. And um, so the idea is they're still down. Trust. Yeah, I, I believe they're still down. As of hmm. this morning, they're still they were still down. Hmm. So yeah. And then Colonial Pipeline, the ransom with that situation. So there's a lot of, yeah, it just seems like an appropriate time to kind of dive into the zero trust. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a complex thing. And um, so so 
kind of why people are talking about zero trust and why they're why they're going there is is they've is there's a couple key factors that you know Sean kind of lists out in his in his article on questis.com and it, it talks about a few different things. Now people this isn't a new problem. It's not a it's not something new that people have been trying to figure out. A lot of it has to do with confirming that someone who's accessing your corporate environment um, is who they say they are, right? It's someone, it's they're basically gonna authenticate and prove that they who they say they are, and then you're going to allow access to different parts of the environment. Now, um, so the big, the big first part of this is the identity problem, right? So people have solved this problem with tokens, people have solved this problem with username and password combinations, you hear things like dual factor authentication. Identity is something that um, uh, people within, when you're trying to grant access, you're always trying to understand who a person is. So just like, just think about like you're accessing your, your bank account online. You have your username and password. A lot of organizations like Wells Fargo and others use, you know, dual factor authentication um, to basically, uh, you, you use your username and password, and then you also, um, uh, it sends a text message, and you you type in the code to your um, uh, to to gain access to your accounts. Now, zero trust is is trying to um, take that idea of identity and combine it with as many factors as possible to constantly confirm that you are who you say you are. Now, so for instance, the text the texting would be one layer, correct? Well, so with with so. That's the, the problem is identity. So we kind of identified the problem. Mm -hmm. the, the challenge is like when, when all those, uh, the, the blue check marks on Twitter, when all of their, you know, Elon Musk and everybody's accounts got hacked, mm -hmm. that was a complex problem because they even had multi-factor enabled, but they were able to intercept that multi-factor message, mm -hmm. right? So, so that's, that's not foolproof either. What Zero yeah. Trust does is it's constantly doing that, right? So it's constantly authenticating based on on, uh, on on where you are, wh what you're connecting from, so what's your endpoint that you're connecting from, uh, where in the world are you connecting to the environment. Um, there, are even, there are even some tools out there that have like analytics as far as your behavior, right? So if all of a sudden you start acting very differently or your keystrokes are different or, um, you know, your timing is different or, or what you're accessing is, is way out of a nor norms, that can that can send an anomaly and an alert. Would right? you say it's kind of similar to like when a credit card company says like, "Hey, you suddenly made a purchase in South Carolina at a gas station. Is this you? Even though you normally are making purchases in California." Yeah, yeah. Kind I mean, so we've all. Thing. Yeah, it's a it's an anomaly. It's something out of the norm. It's something you usually don't do. You know that can that can trigger an alert, um, or sometimes that can just disconnect you. You can just be like, "Nope, you're off." And, and, and it's so that's constantly that the, the old way of doing it was the, hey, you have a castle, you have your uh, hardened perimeter around your applications. Once you get in, you're kind of you're kind of free, free reign to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, where, where zero trust is now you you have to authenticate to get in and, and, and demonstrate who you are. And then you have to constantly you have to constantly do that as you're as you're within the environment. So it's a it's a it's a. It's a constant focus. It's it's a it's the idea of um, um, another another way to think of it as you treat people as if they are always remote and never trusted, right? They're always having to prove they are who they say they are um, at any given time when they're accessing your environment. So, Got it. Yeah. So far, Adam, 100 percent. I 100 percent understand, <laughs> understand it. Adam, is yeah. there any helpful graphic? that one could use to understand the six layers that would build zero trust or, or the six, the six layers to make zero trust a stronger. Um, almost like option. columns. Yeah. Almost like almost columns. Like, almost like columns. Yeah, there could be, there could be, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. Did you, did you have that set up? Oh, you know it, Adam. Oh, that's oh, fantastic. Man. Look at Nothing that. Nothing but professionalism here. That is nice. And you got the little quest. The Quest Q down there in the corner, I that's got it great. All. Adam, when you that's rip fantastic. it off the internet, yeah, I don't change it. <laughs> I'm not Barbara's gonna, got her trademark down there, though, too. We got, 
We got the trademark. We got the trademark, registered trademark down there in the corner. We're good. We got to keep it's it. Fine. We put it, slap an NFT on this. We'll make millions. It's great. <laughs> um, no, so yeah, the, the next one is obviously, you know, the devices concept, right? So, um, you know, what are you connecting from? We, you know, pandemic, everyone works from home. You know, are you connecting, are you connecting from your phone? Are you connecting from your tablet? How are you accessing, how are you accessing the environment? You know, yeah. if you're using Microsoft 365, you know, they have, they have pieces of zero trust, right? They have, they have parts and pieces of you have like an authenticator that says, yeah, I'm okay to use this mobile device to access your, your exchange or, or, or your OneDrive or any of those types of things. It's, it's, you know, dev devices and authentication that you're able to, that you're able to connect to. Something's happening more. I mean, you talked about the pipeline hack mm -hmm. um, and you talked about, you know, those devices, the internet, the internet of things, right? The OT, um, uh, environment, the, the systems that are more, um, they're not necessarily, they're, they're standard based, but there are a lot of it's proprietary, right? So the, the SCADA systems and the things that are like, that are operating a lot of our key critical infrastructure, mm -hmm. those are, those are unique, um, internet of things endpoints that not everybody knows how to manage or, or operate. So how are you going to basically make sure that people have access to those, those, those controls, um, are, are trusted? In the past, those environments have been completely separated, right? You had your your IT environment, and then you had your your operational control plane uh, systems that were, you know, automating production and manufacturing and distribution. We saw we saw what happened when the pipeline. Um, I don't even think it lost control of of distribution. I think they lost control of tracking, mm -hmm. um, so they had to shut down. They had to shut down production. I'm not not exactly 100% sure the fallout of all, all, all of that. But I know they did a pain, I think about a $5 million ransom yeah. and, uh, and, and, and ticked off a lot of people, you know, downstream that were sitting in gas shortage lines. Um, so devices matter, what's connected to the network matters and how you're, how you're trusting those things is, is very, very important. So, so identities, devices, network, uh, what about apps and APIs? So a simple way to think about this one that's important is the idea of, um, and I, I kind of always like to do the analogy of, of what you have on your phone, mm -hmm. right? So you, you, you go online and a simple way to think about this is what's communicating in between applications. And do you want, do you want a user or information from one application to be seen on another? So you, you search, I don't know, you want to go on vacation to South Carolina, you want to go to Charleston or whatever, and you're searching, you're searching, uh, you know, great, great places to visit in Charleston or what to do in Charleston. All of a sudden you, you log into your Instagram and you're seeing all sorts of ads about, you know, the, the Hilton or whatever uh, at that location. Because it sees your location. Got well, it. no, it sees it sees what you're searching. It sees your data from your, your search records in your Google. If you're, if you're launching Google from here, it sees that. And it, it. and it knows that you're the same person who logged into that Google account. Okay. Use that Gmail account to, to do that, um, to basically log into your Instagram. So just having device, having, having applications on your phone as an individual user mm -hmm. that communicate with each other. Um, you're, you're trusting, basically you're trusting one application provider to share your data or at least your search criteria with another application. So, <laughs> It's really, really important. Bless you. Sorry. Um, <laughs> really, really important. You know, you got you got the screen switch in time. That was that was professional. Here's but you thing. didn't hit the mute button. You yeah. gotta. It's a oh. two step process. Switch it, mute. So. So tune in uh, next week to see if can I do a hundred percent of what's needed so it doesn't blow out your ears. Yep. So yeah, I did fifty percent. Fantastic. I didn't want people to see me sneeze, but they heard it. So that was real professional. Yeah. All right. Back to work. Well, well, the cool. So one thing I want to make sure that we talk about is like there zero trust. Like we, I think I mentioned this earlier. It's not new. A lot of people are, are there in other in aspects of what they're doing today already. Okay. Right. So they're, 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 it's not like a totally new phenomenon. It's not like a hundred percent. It's a, it's a term that came up that helps identify a way of thinking about securing your environment. But if you have a SIM, for example, that's monitoring and correlating events, you're already doing a little bit of this 
constant authentication against against potential threats, right? If you're if you're leveraging some like endpoint protection, where you see the device, the endpoint that your end users are using as a potential vulnerability, that that that's an aspect of it, right? So there are already a lot of layers. You know, we we talk about at Quest all the time. There are layers to security that that we're constantly helping people uh, enable, monitor, manage, and support. Um, a lot of that's already out there in the market. It's just how do you kind of bring all those all those concepts together, and 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 you know secure your environment and and move towards a more of a zero trust architecture. It's it's a process, but everyone everyone's somewhere on the spectrum of 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 you know of getting to a zero trust environment. It's not it's not something that's like completely new or foreign. So everybody's on the spectrum, but what's kind of different now, if I'm hearing you correctly, is that we're trying to figure out ways or, or companies are like, oh, wow, there's even more, there's like more remote pockets that I don't have. I, I'm not using zero trust. How can I incorporate them under the architecture of our current mm -hmm. zero trust environment? Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's a, a good way to say is like you have, a lot of people have features of it right now, Yeah. but it's not, it's not, necessarily it's not necessarily built out holistically for zero yeah. trust like you have features of it right you you have you have parts and pieces of the puzzle but you don't have the whole the whole the whole um concept kind of put together so okay it's it's uh, yeah yeah got it yeah. is is that um this is going to be a wildly broad question but i'm going to throw it out there it, is it a difficult thing to to bring together um, well, it, it, it's not, no, it's not, it's not difficult, but you have to first understand what you have in place today. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the challenge is people have legacy systems, right? People have, there's organizations that have been around for, you know, a long time leveraging technology and, um, you know, doing, implementing a zero trust architecture mm -hmm. changes the idea of, of having a, a hardened perimeter and how your people move within the organization, right? So once you're inside the data center, or once you're leveraging an application, or once you're logged into a, um, say someone has a SaaS application like Microsoft 365, mm -hmm. like people have people have built out controls and policies for years, right? And and how you access and how you're granted access into an environment isn't something you can change overnight. So the technology's there, the um, the ability to to deliver it is there. It's really how do you get people to embrace a little bit of a changed a little bit of a change to the way they've they've been doing things. It's a different way to to manage and a different way to grant access. So how are you gonna you know how are you gonna get your people on board with that? Um, is is usually the one of the hardest hardest things to do. So. so would you say? So I think you mentioned something really important. Um, knowing where you're at, would you say that's kind of the first step? Just kind of like assessing what you have and where you actually have legacy systems, where you do have some zero zero trust currently in place. Like, where would you suggest people start? Um, so we, we always, we always strongly advise trying to find, find the gaps first, right? So identify, you know, key systems, identify how you're protecting them today. And then if you want to move to a zero trust architecture, you kind of roadmap out, okay, what do I have in place today? Mm -hmm. Um, what are the potential vulnerabilities I have right now? And then if I want to move to zero trust architecture, a zero trust environment, what are the steps I need to put in place there? You don't have to rip everything out that you have, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to change your entire architecture, but what what incremental steps do you put in place to to provide access to your local um, applications? And then if you have, here's here's another challenge, and I don't mean to throw more challenges in, but it's it, everything's evolving at the same time. So you're like you're trying to you're trying to evaluate what what's going to change, and then and then put yourself in the best position to deal with that change as you go forward. So there's not a, it's not a one and done scenario, but the best thing to do is identify, you know, what you have in place. Yeah. Um, and then, and then how to remediate that going forward. That's, because that's huge. The goalposts are moving. 
So you got to go posts like, are constantly moving. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then someone from, you know, marketing or sales comes in with a harebrained idea about, Hey, let's use this application. And they just throw that in the mix. And then, and then, you know, a company gets acquired and they got to merge, you know, G suite uh, applications with Microsoft and, and then, you know, they have four different domains. So how do we get all these people who are logged into these different, I mean, it's a, it is a challenge, but it's, mm. it's, it's exciting because there are, there is a structure around how to get there. You just have to, you just have to identify the parts and pieces, you know, that you have in place and how you, and where you want to go. So. Uh, and I'll say this, some people love the challenge. If you're watching this on the replay, you might, you may be like, ah, this is not for me. I do not want to do this and I don't have the people to do this. We yep. can do it. We're happy yeah. to get in there and help you out. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's our business, right? That's, that's why, that's why we're here is because when, when complex situations present themselves, we want to help people mm -hmm. simplify them, break them apart and, 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 and build them back together stronger. So, um, you know, something I wanted to bring up and, and Mike was talking about this today. Um, uh, uh, Mike's our, our CTO and what we're seeing in, in the cybersecurity world and why zero trust and things like data loss prevention and visibility of what you have and who's in your environment, logging and patching is so important is because there's a new, a new threat coming out from, um, from ransomware, right? So there, there used to be, and it still, it still goes on. We see this all the time in our instant response, but there used to be the idea of, Hey, we, we, they, they, they gain access and they, they encrypt critical systems, they encrypt your data, your database, your customer list, whatever. And they say, pay this amount of Bitcoin or, um, or you're not going to, we're not going to give you the encryption key to get your data back. Right. The good, def the good defense against that was, well, you know, restore from backups. Right. Well, then they started moving, they started moving out and figuring out, okay, well we need to encrypt the backups. Okay. So got it. So then, so then the next move from the good guys was, okay, well, let's, let's get an immutable write once, um, write only once uh, backup plan, right? Off net immutable storage. That, that was a move. Now what the bad actors are doing is, right, so we, it's kind of this cat and mouse game. Now what they're doing is they're, they're, they're going to the customer and the person who gets breached and saying, we've, we've been in your system. We've, um, we've, we've, we've taken, we've stolen this data, this set of data, um, or, or this customer database, or this intellectual property, whatever it is. And if you don't pay us, we're going to ransom, we're going to publish that online. So it could be like, hey, we're gonna publish it to the dark web, we're gonna publish all your people's addresses, we're gonna publish it. So it's this threat of... Um, Didn't that just before, happen to it was, Apple? Something well, there's yeah, there's that, and there's there's a couple other ones that we're seeing out there where it's a, it's a different it's a different attack, right? So so and and then I mean, so if someone says, hey, I stole this from your house, mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm going to publish it, right? The first thing you're going to do is be like, well, did they really steal it? Mm -hmm. I mean, you look you look and you're like, hey, did is this thing that they told me I stole is it in my house anymore? Well, with data, that's kind of hard to know because you're trying to figure out, okay, what actually left. And what did they actually successfully remove? Mm -hmm. um, so could be lying. They could be bluffing. They might not be. Um, probably not. They're, they're professionals, but, you know, they might not be. And you don't really know how that left, right? Unless you've logged it and you've tracked it and you have, you know, enforceable policies and data loss prevention, whatever that means, in, enforced. Um, you could be up, up a creek without a paddle. And so that's, that's a new threat. And where my head goes on that kind of threat is, okay, well, you pay the ransom, you get your encryption key back and you, 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 you apply it to your environment and you get your data back. Right. But when they've, when they've taken it, when they've removed it from your system, what's to stop them from hitting you back up again, 12 months from now, if they have your intellectual property, right. If they have your customer list, if they have something that you would see as that you don't want, your competitors to have, or you don't want on the dark web, man, um, they're, you know, they're going to rinse and repeat that threat over and over again. I mean, that's a, that's a residual income stream for bad actors. So, 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 Hey, happy long Friday. story. <laughs> no, well, I, I'm just saying like, so that's a, that's a new, that's a new gap. Right. Yeah. And, and the thing about security and the thing about zero trust and the thing about, 
um, just being in this in this game is you it's always evolving, right? It's always changing. And mm -hmm. um, that's why understanding where you're at, where you want to go, and then putting the framework around it is is, is critical. Um, we do that. We do that every day. We love to have those conversations. And, um, you know, if you ever if you ever want to have that conversation with one of our team leads or anything like that, we love doing workshops. So, yeah. Cool. Great. And again, if you want to reach out to us, the links are in the description. Also, you can always reach out to us at questsys.com. And like Adam said, we'd love to talk to you and help you out. How can we help? That is our motto. Um, yeah. Anything else, Adam, before we jump to our second part of the show? I think that's it. I think that's Adam? it. Adam? Yes, sir. One of our most popular segments. Out of both segments, one of the most popular. What would you say? What are you watching? What's worth watching? And Netflix, Hulu, podcasts. What's happening? Uh, of the business people, break media. <laughs> uh, business breakdowns. Um, Patrick right. O'Shaughnessy, uh, the guy who does the Invest Like the Best podcast. Uh, he okay. came out with a new one called Business Breakdowns. It's where um, they kind of take like challenging business problems and they and they simplify it. Um, right. They just did a really, really interesting one on um, probably a bad time because I think it just got cut in half from a valuation standpoint. And a lot of people lost a lot of money. Um, but on Bitcoin and Ethereum, it's a really, really interesting podcast. If you're, ever, if you're interested in that stuff, it really breaks down the nature of uh, cryptocurrencies and blockchain and all that kind of stuff. It's called Business Breakdowns. I was listening to it this week. It's, it's pretty cool. That's cool. Uh, my contribution yeah. to this conversation will be more childish. Uh, there, is a, <laughs> there is a new series that was released on Hulu today. Um, it's Stop Motion. I believe it's Stop Motion, and I believe it's called The Life of Modoc. So he is one of the lesser known evil villains in the Marvel Universe, and uh, it is voiced by Patton Oswalt, and he was also one of the writers. And um, it's very kind of adult swim, um, very kind of robot chicken. So if you're if you're into that okay. sort of thing and you kind of want some comedy and you like that sort of comedy, you'll love it. Yeah, I live in a house with uh, – yeah, just that's not going to fly Probably in my house. Probably not going to we'll work. Just, we'll, just, we'll just leave with that. It's not going to work over there. But, Adam, yeah. if, if you get 30 minutes alone, you might enjoy it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, Adam, any, any final thoughts before we take off? Um. Not today. No, I hope everyone had a, hope everyone had a good week um, and uh, going into a nice, nice weekend here. And um, can't believe it's already June. I know that's like such an old man thing to say, but. Um, <laughs> Where'd all the time go? Get off where's my the lawn. <laughs> it's getting, it's moving so fast. But yeah, my no, it's. Uh, are acting up today. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nope. Nothing else of, of merit from, from this side of the fence. All right. Nothing for me either. Uh, we'll be back next week. Whole new topic here on Spilling the IT. Thanks for jumping in. Thanks for hanging out. If you're watching this on a replay and you have a question about um, the tech space, leave it in the comments. We'd, we'd love to look at it. We can help you out. Again, you can always reach out to us at questsys.com. Um, that's quest, questsys.com. And um, also, if you want to dive in more into Zero Trust, a link to the blog post is also in the description. So, uh, yeah, hit the subscribe, hit the notification. We'll see you next week.